Hello everyone, welcome to this first Pyramix 15 tutorial. Very excited to show you all what's around, all what's new. But first and foremost, let's have a look on what we worked on. So we redesigned totally your user experience and the user interface so that it looks slick, modern, bit darker, but you still have three levels that you can choose from dark to lighter. We totally revamped the mixer. So we can also change the size independently of the workstation. We redesigned the user experience where you can uh, put channels or buses in always show modus. So while you scroll through bigger mixers, you always see the most important ones. We implemented clip-based effect that you can add on every clip as you wish on the timeline with freeze modus and we implemented R2 support with different R2 plugins. Um, and this will this list will enhance in the future. We upgraded the strip tool and the bus tool. So now they support 32 channels with a complete new inter user interface, but also with very easy accessible five easy presets that you can of course restore and restore or recall as you wish. We re-engineered the VS3 plugins as well with new interface. Uh, and we implemented sidechain for all kinds of plugins, including our own VS3, but also VST3 and VST2 plugins in native and mass core. We reworked on the monitoring section that was very already properly designed for immersive workflow. We also worked on the new final check, our loudness metering tool supporting 32 channels now. So perfect for multi-channel workflows. And our video engine has completely been redesigned with better performances. And of course, much more, as you can expect, in bug fixes and improvements. So let's have a look at it. This is the look of Pyramix 15. As you can see, everything has been put on a flat modus, much darker, much more looks of 2025, and the mixer has been completely redesigned. But first and foremost, I want to bring you to the Pyramix settings where you can select what user interface look you want to have. So in application layout, you then can choose the theme, either dark, gray, the mode I'm, it, I'm in it now, and light. To be able to look at it, you have to restart the Pyramix so that you can apply the theme. Now looking at the timeline, as you can see, functionality are always the same, real-time editing while you're playing back, you can edit, you can make a cut, you can make a crossfade, you can change the gain of the clips you have in there, but you see that the mixer has completely changed and this is a complete new interface. So for example, I have here a few strips and I want to move, for example, some things around and at the bottom I see I have like a, a little mixer I have here different pinning possibilities for example this brown strip and this light blue strip I would like to keep them where they are so I pin them now so it means that when I slide through the mixer they remain at the position wherever they are so it means they remain constantly visible which is very handy when you deal with large mixes. You see that here, all the first EQ and the first compressor, depending what it is, is shown in a small EQ graph and dynamic graphs. Clicking on the graph opens, in this case, my new EQX. When I say new EQX, it has been completely redesigned in terms of the user interface. So you see all the functionalities are pretty similar, but on the top of it, I have a tab. So it means I can go very quickly from one strip to another where the EQX has been implemented. And for example, put it here and holding control, putting it into my memory four means that when I go over there, I can recall it very quickly. So these are the five memories and I can reset it, of course. And I can also change the size of it. So I can follow, for example, the scale of my mixer or I can make it suddenly very big if I want because it's something special that I want to have on a specific screen. So I can really customize it the way I need to look at it. I have a dynamic curve as well that I can click on so it opens the relative plugin and I see here a strip tool where I can change now my uh, compression uh, threshold or my ratio, whatever it is, and it will adapt on the little screen. Same for all the other VS3 plugins. I have the tabs. I can move from one to the other. 
very easily. And if I go on a multi-channel strip, I will see here then that I have the routing, for example, this is the bus tool, I have the routing where I would like to apply or not up to 32 tracks, this very effect on my bus in that case. Moving things around are very easy. I take this EQX, I move it onto the other strip while I'm playing back. I hold control, I move it and I copy it with the same content. And then what is nice is to understand those little symbols underneath the plugins. Let's start with the plus on the left side. The first one is that what I want to choose uh, if it's an EQ, a dynamic, and what type it is, whether it's a VST2, VST3, or if it's a merging plugin. And I can search it, of course, and then it shows up whatever it is in that category, and I add an effect, and it opens it automatically. That means that this minus and this square next to it opens all plugins on that strip, and the nice thing, then, I have a button, the minus one, hiding them all or showing them all, which makes it very easy to open them straight away. And then the little menu button allows me, for example, to switch them all off at the same time, all on at the same time, and so on. On the panning side, I can double click on my controller, and this is now my panner, that I can also make bigger or smaller, and I can decide if I want to only see the top, for example. This is really up to you. And here I have a stereo strip going into my 91.6 bus and output. So if I would have an ambisonic output at the same time, I could overlay them if I wish. And I can go back to the standard, for example, top and rear, so that I now have also the elevation in it straight away. And as always, all the tabs, meaning all the strips and all the groups in terms of auxes or of buses going to one of the main bus. To show you a little bit how it works with the routing, I go now here and go to my aux bus. For example, I can change the color so that we see straight away what's happening and so that you can understand it. So now this is all orange, these are my sends, and I don't see any bus here that is orange for the moment because it's on the complete right. So here it is, and now this bus is orange, that means that's my master auxiliary group, so there's a send and a return, and I will have to send things in there. So I enable it, and I can send plus and minus. If I select several strips, holding shift control, I can now switch them all on and move them all at the same time. And of course, it's going to keep the delta, if I do that, individually. And now it's send and it goes back to my master bus. Let's move a bit further to my clip-based effect. I have my clip-based effect over here on which I will select now a clip, for example this one, and I will say plus, in which I will add now my VS3 EQX, for example, and I can apply this EQX to this clip. Of course, I can do this while I'm playing back, or I have here my play functions with a solo, for example, a loop, and I see also this orange effects here. That means that there is now an effect that is implemented in this clip. If I move somewhere else, I have now a free effect again. So I can add this one if I want to. And I see now the effect is here. Or I can add another one if required. So now I have here two effects. Changing the order is very simple. I can move those arrows up and down. And when the processing becomes too powerful, I can also use the freeze. And for advanced users, I can withdraw my signal pass through the different plugins, especially when I have multi-channel plugins that becomes very useful. Now I can see what's happening with my strip tool. For example, it's a completely new redesigned strip tool where I have my EQ that I can put pre or post dynamic. And I can, of course, draw my different curves that I want with my five band EQ. And I have my compressor over here and now I have my sidechain. So I choose which channel I want to inject as a sidechain. And then if I, you're gonna see it straight away if I make it post effect. So obviously it's gonna compress much more than less. So it sees that I have an effect of my channel seven, bringing it in into my strip tool. Each of those plugins can also change dimension, as we said, with the scale that we can make bigger or smaller or to follow the general scale. In terms of the overall look, we have now here the main icons that are used on the left top side, meaning new, new from template, 
open project, save project, and save as, and zoom in, zoom out in terms of the timeline. And in terms of icons, I have here my transport bar. It all has been moved onto the right side, redesigned icons, my mixer, my monitoring section, and my loudness metering. So here for the stereo part, I can see which channel or which bus I'm analyzing and the same for my multi-channel or I can just disable my uh, stereo one and I can start to analyze my loudness metering, for example, with a historiograph, seeing all what's going on in there. This was an introduction to show you a little bit the new look, the new interface of what Pyramix is about to offer in terms of Pyramix 15. Um, Stay tuned for other videos coming up very soon.